Back to reality. Back to reality. <laughs> all right. What types of data are backed up on System Manager? Select all that apply. Everything. Everything. All of them. Building the Avaya or a SIP network. So now is where we're going to start building Session Manager and System Manager. So more fun stuff begins now. So remember that the Aura SIP network components are System Manager as the centralized tool for administration, Session Manager as centralized routing, centralized SIP routing, and also the tool for integration between different applications via SIP. And then you have your endpoints, those could be SIP or non-SIP. And then you have SIP entities. Remember, SIP entities are pretty much all of those applications around session manager. Uh, the first thing you need to do is install system manager. System manager needs to be fully installed and functional before you're able to install session manager. Because during the installation of session manager, Session Manager needs to do uh, initial enrollment with System Manager. So you must have your System Manager up and running before you even install Session Manager. In our labs, Session Manager is already installed. The only thing is that it's not defined yet in System Manager. That's what you're going to be doing. You're going to be creating the Session Manager instance in System Manager. We're not going to cover how to install Session Manager just how to define the session manager instance in system manager, okay? Once your session manager instance is defined in system manager, you'll see that a database replication happens between system manager and session manager. And actually, an initial database replication already happened. But then, once you define the session manager instance in system manager, you know, it's going to be a complete replication between system manager and session manager. See? So once you define the instance, then the replication happens, and now from that moment, everything you do in system manager related to those session managers is going to be pushed to the session managers. Now, in order to define that SIP instance, or that session manager instance actually, what you need to do is these four things. You see here in this slide, you need to define a SIP domain for the session manager instance. Remember, when I say instance, I'm pretty much referring just to session manager. You could have 12 instances or 28 instances in release 7. So for you to define one instance, you need to specify the SIP domain that you want to assign to that instance, to that session manager. You need to specify the location where you want to leave that session manager, or, or that you want to assign to your session manager. You need to define a SIP entity for your session manager. And finally, once you have those three things, you're able to define your session manager SIP instance. Once you have your session manager instance, you just need to enable SIP services. And then once you enable SIP services, you're able to do any type of administration in your session manager. Could be routing, could be any type of stuff that you could do through, uh, with session manager. Let's see. Let's see if you're able to answer this question. What do you think would be the most logical order? System, System and installation. Then session That's the first manager. one. Then what? Session manager installation. Yeah. Then what? Then uh, activate session manager subsection. Uh, but session before, manager, session network configuration. you need to give some IPs, and right? Yeah, network configuration. Network configuration would be the third one. And then activate, activate. activate session manager SIP service and finally routing administration. Now, the SIP domain. So everything in session manager is SIP, is domain-based route. Okay, everything in session manager is domain-based routing, which means that the domain matters. So no matter if you're using, using SIP registry routing or network routing policies, no matter which method you're using, is domain-based routing because the domain is taken into account when session manager receives the request and it checks the dial pattern, it checks the, the dial pattern it's created in session manager it, and it checks with the dial number and the domain to see if it matches with one of the dial patterns that you have in session manager. It makes more sense later when you configure routing. Just remember that everything in session manager, 
when referring to routing is domain-based routing. First thing you need to do to, when you define a session manager in system manager, specify the domain that that session manager is going to handle. It could be one domain, it could be multiple domains, but at least one domain. Here they're refreshing your memory with the different uh, types of routing that you could have in session manager. See brace routing, you already know that it's when the destination has a user profile in session manager. Okay? If the destination has a user profile in session manager, session manager uses C routing and you as the administrator of session manager don't have to do anything for that call to go through. On the other hand, we have network routing policies, and that's useful for when the destination doesn't have a user profile in session manager. I kind of like this example here because actually, depending who's calling who, you have either C Racer routing or network routing policies. Think about this. If your H223 phone here is calling the SIP phone, is session manager using register routing or network routing policies? Register routing. Register routing because the destination has a user profile in session manager. Right. However, if the SIP phone is the one calling the H223 phone, is network routing policies. Because of the destination. Because the destination, in this case the H223 phone, matter. has a user profile not in session manager but in CF. <laughs> you see? So in that case it would be network routing policy. Okay, so every time session manager receives a request, it checks if the domain in that request is a domain that it's supposed to process. It's a domain that that session manager is supposed to handle. If, it if session manager receives a request for a domain that is not configured in that session manager, then session manager tries, tries to send that request to an outbound proxy if there is an outbound proxy configured. If there is no outbound proxy configured, it tries to send it to a DNS server to resolve where to send it. And if there's no DNS uh, entry telling session manager where to send that, sim session manager simply rejects the request. So that's why you need to make sure that if you want your session manager to process that request, you need to uh, specify the domain that session manager is going to handle. Session manager doesn't care about the domain uh, of the caller. It cares, about, it cares about the domain of the destination. Okay, you never know who's calling you at the end. So it checks the domain of the destination. Let me see if I can get to see it in the, probably too quick, but the, the domain in the, well, we don't see it there, we see it It cares about the domain in the invite, actually the domain in the request URI which always has information about the destination. Okay, so ah, here is a better slide. Again, it checks the invite and it checks the request URI. The request URI always has information about the destination. Who am I trying to invite to this session? So in this case, it'll check this domain and it's gonna check if that domain is one of the domains that session is supposed to process. You can see here in the from header who's the caller, and in this case, the caller has the same domain. But what I'm saying is that session manager doesn't care about that domain. It could be coming from another domain, and that's fine. Now, how you configure SIP domains is very, very easy. You just need to go to the routing menu domains and you just specify your domain there. We're not going to be using nacr.com, we're going to be using converge1.com. Okay? And that's the very first lap. And you have to do this with your lab partner. Just go to domains, click on new. It's very simple. converge1.com, the way you see it here, not with, not with the number one, but the entire just word, converge1.com, and it, that's it. That's how you add domains to session manager. Well, there are some extra steps later that you'll see. So we have the SIP domain in the system. Or let me know if it's added. <coughs> Good. Okay, let's see. 
which of the following characteristics represent the Avaya or a SIP domain? Not D. Everything but D, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. What's the primary purpose of a SIP domain? Maybe yeah, to, yeah. If you have to pick one, yeah, C would be the, the best option to enable C route. Locations. Mentioned before that lo locations are very similar to network regions in CN. Locations allow you to define a physical place, and it's usually associated with IP address patterns as network regions, subnets. right? Huh? Like subnets. Like. It could be a subnet, yeah, right. it could be an IP address range. There are different ways to specify the IP address pattern. Okay. Defining the subnet would be one way. Hey, notice what it says here. The location associates an IP address pattern with a name yep. to be used later in the routing policy to determine if the originating location, to determine the originating location of a call. So, You create locations in Session Manager because later when you create network routing policies, you are able to define if a specific location is able to use the policy or not. So you could allow some locations to use the policy, the routing policy. Maybe the routing policy allows you to dial internationally. So you could later say, hey, these locations are going to be able to use that policy and these other locations are not going to be able to use the routing policy. Locations are also used for managing the bandwidth to, from, or within a location based on the call admission control settings. Remember that we saw yesterday call admission control? So that's where you configure, uh, so in the locations are where you could configure call admission control. And here in this example, we see an IP address range that they're assigning to each location. How you configure locations? You just go to the routing menu and I don't see it here, but it's just below domains. Yes, yeah. And you, all you need to do is click on new, give a name to your location, and if you go to the very bottom of the page, you're gonna find the location pattern. And take a look at this. I mean, here in this slide, we see the different options for IP address patterns. So you could use start as a wildcard, you know, to specify the pattern like this, anything, so it would be everything that starts with 172, period. You could use X or lower X as another wildcard, as you see here. You could you could use a mix of those two wildcards. You could use an IP address uh, range, the way you see it here, from this IP address to this IP address. Or, as you said, Alex, you could use a subnet, saying, uh, specifying the subnet, right? The entire subnet that's going to be associated to this location. Mm -hmm. You could have multiple subnets, you know, associated to the location. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have to be just one, but you could have multiple subnets. Yeah, like the, the floors in the building or something. This is how the location form looks like. So all you need to do is give it a name, and you're going to see that most of the parameters within the location form are related to call admission control. If you're not planning on configure call admission control, all you need to do is assign an IP address pattern to the location. You don't see it here, it's towards the bottom of the page, and but that's it. Okay? If you do assign a, a total bandwidth for communications between this location and any other location, there is a page in System Manager, the Managed Bandwidth Usage, where you could see per location how much bandwidth is being used. It's kind of cool. Oh, and not only that, but you could create alarms to be generated in case that bandwidth is reached or in case a percentage of that bandwidth is reached. So actually, let me go to one of your systems because we don't see it in the slide. What I'm saying is that if you do configure routing, sorry, if you do configure call admission control,
Notice that all of these parameters here are related to call admission control. Total bandwidth, the total bandwidth between this location and any other location. Multimedia bandwidth is a subset of the total bandwidth dedicated to video. But what I wanted to point out is that there is this alarm threshold that you could configure if you're configuring call admission control saying, hey, if 80% of that total bandwidth is reached, you want to generate an alarm. That'll go in your alarm log? That's going to be to alarms, actually. Right, to the alarms. Yeah, to the alarms. Right. Yeah. yeah. And you're able to specify a latency before the overall alarm is triggered, set to five minutes. So what you're saying is here is if, with, if in five minutes, uh, or let's say during five minutes, the threshold is reached, then you generate the, the alarm. Well, let me rephrase this. So, so, so if, if it keeps it stays over 80% for five minutes, for five minutes, then, then you generate, generate the alarm. Right. Okay. That way, you don't generate an alarm right away for just price, a quick spike. Yeah, for, for just a quick spike. Okay. Yeah. And here's where you specify your location pattern. And that's not allow me right now because I haven't given a name to the location, but in the bottom, let's just give this location one or whatever. And then here at the bottom is where you specify the IP address pattern of your location. What I want you to do for this lab, let's see the lab. It says go to locations, click new, add location name, where it's gonna be a location for your lab. And they're gonna ask you to assign a pattern, IP address pattern for the IP addresses in your lab. But however, what I want you to do is actually I want you to create four locations. One for your own lab and one for the other lab. So I wanted to end up with four locations. You could look, uh, uh, the name could be lab one, lab two, lab three, lab four, I don't care about the name, but I wanted to end up with four locations. And remember, the only thing that changes in every lab is the third object, right? And lab one is 10, lab three is 30. Yeah. yeah, so maybe what you could do if, if, since here the two of you are in the same lab, maybe you go ahead and create two locations and you could create the other two. So that same thing Easy for you, point. Anita and Andrew, maybe one of you creates two locations and the other one creates other two, <laughs> however you want to do. The third object, right? Yeah. Well, the third object is going to be specific to the lab. To but the what lab. I'm saying is, just to be real crazy, the last octet, usually anything less than a dot ten is for actual devices like appliances. So I'm going to do dot ten through dot twenty as a range for phones, you know, something like that. Okay. Here in the lab, we have let's see, all of those IP addresses of the elements are just yeah, it does all over the the sub. How did it go? Easy. Should be easy.
good. So if all yeah. of you have four locations in each lab, perfect. Only that one is getting there. You could have done before we started the lab. Oh, you did it? Yeah. And I, for mine, I actually put limits, thresholds, tension. Let's see, question for you. What are some common characteristics of network locations? All that stuff. Yeah. All of that stuff. Yeah, say, because you, you can manage bandwidth with it. Yeah. Th set thresholds. Probably the last one, it's probably, it may be new to you because you haven't done it yet. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Session Manager uses the originating location to determine dial pattern selection. Oh. Remember I said that based on the location, you could deny access to the routing policy. In the call admission? No, that's something call rather than call admission. That, yeah, that's just for bandwidth. Okay. Locations are used to huh, select two. Network devices and? B. No. Yeah, so A and B. Session marship entity. So we will have domain and a location. Well, you have four locations, but we're going to be using one of them for your session manner. So session manner zip entity. Session, uh, session manner needs, needs to be defined as a zip entity. I remember the first time I saw this, like, oh, why? So even session manner itself needs to be defined as a zip entity. And later I understood that the reason is that you're defining a zip entity actually for the security module one hand. Remember that drawing that I did yesterday where there was the security module, the SM100, right. and then the SM application? So for the SM application to trust on communications coming from the SM100, you need to, you need to define a SIP entity for the SM100, okay? So, it, so yes, even for session mode itself, you need to define a SIP entity. How you do it? Easy, you go to routing, go to SIP entities, and Create a new SIP entity, give it a name. I would give it a name like Session Manor Lab 1 or Session Manor Lab 2. I mean, even though it's this SM100, it's going to be your Session Manor. So give it a name that makes sense to you. The type is going to be Session Manor. So once you commit, the type cannot be changed. That's one of those fields that if you want to change it, you have to remove the SIP entity which could be painful, you know, because maybe there's in the future a lot of stuff associated to that SIP entity. So type is one of those fields that cannot change, ca cannot be changed once you save. Notice that here you don't see the location field with information, but I want you to put the location of your lab. I mean, you're gonna be defining right now your session manager. So your session manager right now is gonna be in your lab. So assign the location of your lab to your session manager. And then towards the bottom, you're gonna see that you need to define listening ports so that session miners listens on those ports for traffic. We normally define a TCP, UDP, and TLS port. And not only that, but you need to associate those ports to the domains. Could be one domain or multiple domains. Right now we only have one domain. So you have to associate the port to that domain so that session manager listens for traffic on that port only for traffic going to that domain. Mm -hmm. So this is where you kind of link all of the stuff that you created before. It's not gonna be an ACR.com, in our case it's converge1.com. That port and that protocol needs to match later with the port and protocol that you configure in the SIP phone. That's how the SIP phone is able to register with session manager. Okay, so whatever you configure here needs to match later with the port and protocol that you configure in the phone. We normally open uh, we normally open these ports 5060 for TCP or UDP and 5061 for TLS. If you Registering Avaya SIP phones, Avaya SIP phones never register using UDP. You know, but we still kind of leave it there in case you're trying to register any other phone, any other SIP phone that might use UDP. 
okay? But we leave the door open for TCP and for TLS, pretty much, if it's just a via phone. TCP, if you wanna register without encryption, TLS, in case you wanna register with encryption. Okay, so remember that whatever you configure here needs to match with the port and protocol configured in the phone. And that's it. Which of the following is not a SIP entity? Hmm. Communication management? That's a SIP entity. No, Everything no, around session manager. Yeah. Video endpoints. Yeah. yeah. In general, endpoints, no matter if they're video or not, in general, endpoints are not SIP entities. If it's a SIP endpoint, it registers directly with session manager, so it's not a SIP entity. If it's an AC23 endpoint or digital or analog, those register with CM, and CM is the one who talks to session manager on behalf of those on behalf of those endpoints. So in general, endpoints are not SIP entities. Mm -hmm. However, any other thing is gonna it needs to be defined as a as a SIP entity if it's communicating directly with session manager. Okay. Later in the exercise, you'll add the SIP entity. Stay here with me. Once you have the SIP entity, the next step is defining the session manager instance. That's where you could define different global parameters like endpoint fallback policy. Maybe you want to define an auto fallback policy or a manual fallback policy. You're able to specify if your session manager is gonna monitor SIP entities. So you define if you wanna enable SIP entity monitoring or not. You could configure some stuff related to call admission control. This is where you could configure Nick bonding in case you want to bond together Ethernet 2 and Ethernet 3. And once you define your session manager instance, then you're going to be able to do all of these things in your session manager. You know, all of the administration tasks related to session manager. How you do it? You go now to session manager, the session manager menu and you go to session manager administration. For this to happen, you need to previously have a SIP entity defined for the SM100. So don't try it right away, just stay with me and I'll show you stuff and then you'll do it in the exercise. You go to session manager administration. Uh, here you could configure some pa parameters, like for example, the one that I mentioned, fallback policy. By default it's set to auto, but you could change it to manual and some other stuff that most of the time you just leave the way it is. Now, when you create your session manager instance, uh, the first thing you need to specify, this is gonna be a drop down menu where you need to specify the SIP entity that you created previously for your session manager. And then, oh, by the way, let me go back to the SIP entity. Something very important here. The IP address here, when you define the SIP entity of your session manager, yeah. is the IP address of the SM100, right. the security module 100, okay? okay? Remember, that's the front door of session manager for SIP messages. Then later, when you define the, ses the, the instance, the session manager instance, you're gonna see this other field, management access point host name slash IP. That's where you're gonna assign the management IP address of your session manager. Okay, under management access point hostname IP. In the screenshot, we see it as an FQDN, but this is where you're gonna put the IP address of your management interface. And then you specify a mask, you specify a default gateway. The default gateway of the lab is the dot one. Remember that the third octet changes depending on your lab assignment, but the default gateway is uh, the dot one IP address. You'll see it in the exercise. Stay here with me. Bonding can be configured here. It's disabled by, by default, but you could enable bonding between the two interfaces. I personally haven't done it, so I don't really, I can't really tell you if there are any pros or cons about it. Uh, then, you have the option to enable or disable monitoring for this session manner that you're about to define in system manager. So by default, monitoring is enabled, 
which means that this session man is gonna monitor the state of the zip entities around this session manager. And these are the default timers. Notice that it has a proactive cycle time of 900 seconds. So that's how often session man monitors the zip entity when the link is up. So four times an hour. So, say that again? Yeah, four times an hour. Four times, uh, yeah, every 15 minutes. Yep. Every 15 minutes, session man sends an options message, options request to the zip entity. If the zip entity answers 200 OK, it waits for another 15 minutes. If the zip entity doesn't answer with a 200 OK, it retries one more time because this number of retries by default is set to one. So it sends again the options request. If the zip entity still doesn't answer, then session manager considers that zip entity to be down and it moves to the re reactive cycle time where it knows now that the entity is down, it's not trying to route anything through that zip entity, but still monitoring the state of the entity to see if it comes back up. So now every two minutes or 120 seconds, it sends an option request to see if the, if the zip entity is again back in service. Okay, so those are those three time, those three settings that you see there. Right. You could later change them per zip entity if you want to change the settings, but you're enabling this globally for this session manager. CDRs is another thing that you could enable here. By default, they're disabled, but you could create a CDR if you want for every call that goes through session manager. <coughs> well, for every request that goes through session manager. Uh, you're able to specify a password for this username, which is a username and password that a third-party application could use to go to the place where the CDRs are stored and grab them from there. Okay? Those CDR files are stored there for five days. And so you have five days to get them out of session manager. And then we have some stuff in the bottom of that page related to PPM that you usually leave as is. And I'll talk about PPM later. It stands for Personal Profile Manager, but I'll talk about it later when we have communication manager in the picture. But you normally leave, leave these settings the way they are. And that's it. Then when you click on Commit, you're going to see that your session manager comes up for the first time in System Manager. Let's see, what parameters can be configured within the session manager instance? A, B, and D. Yeah. Everything but never routing policies. Post configuration checklist. So once you have your session manager up and running, you first want to make sure that the SIP services are enabled. Then verify that the SM100 is up. Verify that all maintenance tests pass and that the replication between system manager and session manager is okay. It should show synchronized. So let's see, if you go to session manager, in the dashboard, you're gonna see your session manager coming up. Once everything is up, you're gonna see that the service is set to deny new service. You need to change it from deny new service to accept new service. Otherwise, your session manager would never accept requests going to that session manager. So you wanna change that. Another thing that you want to make sure is that all of the maintenance tests passed on that session manager. Uh, and by the way, all of these options that you see here in green are actually hyperlinks that you could use to go to that page where you run the test or go to that place where you... It's in red, it's a hyperlink too. It's a hyperlink too, mm -hmm. yeah, that takes you like, for example, in this case, entity monitoring is in red, but it's a hyperlink that you could click on and it takes you to the place where you could monitor those zip entities. That way you don't have to remember <coughs> where that page is located in these menus. Here's the test, here are the tests for a session manager. You could even run tests for system manager itself. And then one of the most important things is making sure that the replication between system manager and session manager shows synchronized. If that's not the case, 
we're in a bad place <laughs> because that means that stuff that you configure in system manager is not going to be pushed to session man. That's bad. Let's see, what are the post configuration checks required to activate session man? ABC. Yeah. Let's do the lab. And then we'll go have lunch. Did you find it? Well, I oh, I found it already. But I wanted to show you something with this, actually. Uh -huh. um, I'm good with the other one. Okay. okay. So, I tried this before. Uh -huh. And I put in our lab is, is 10. Yeah, 10. So, so dot 9, nine is the. Right. That's perfect. Uh, I didn't have to put this in, but I just put notes in. Session uh -huh. manager. Lab one, that's our location. Perfect. Right? I added uh, encrypted, uh, non encrypted, and the UDP. Uh huh. And you're just missing the domain. That's what the message is. Ah, that's what that is. But hold on, why is that the but domain it's not, is not there? It's not there. That's the thing. Well, yeah, it's not there, I guess. But, but I, there's nothing to select. That's the only thing. Did you add that domain later? Cancel, cancel that. Cancel you'll have to. You'll, let me see the domain. Oh, the, the yeah, yeah. The lab you that you got to go to the domain. Did the lab have that in the domain? Yeah, yeah. Remember that was the first thing. So. Oh, we may have it. Yeah. So that's uh, what you're missing. Okay. Converge one dot com. Uh, lowercase. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's stupid. That that's so what you guys were missing. Uh, was okay. So now you could go to zip entities. You have to, you're going to have to do it again. That's okay. It practice makes perfect. Yeah, that's for you. Follow the steps to make sure that you're adding everything to and that to make sure that you're also using the right IP addresses. I think we're doing just we're doing two entities or just one? Only one. Only you only ours. have one, one section per yeah. lab. Right. Okay. So the reason why I made you create four locations is because later really you're gonna come into yeah. play. Okay. Session manager administrator. Okay. Next one. Session manager administration. Session manager. Master, what's SDP again? Yeah, what is SDP? SDP. Session Description SDP. Protocol. SDP. What do you see there? Oh, over here where it says uh, click ignore. Ah, okay. SDP. I talk about the SDP later when, when I talk about the, the basics of SIM. It's called Session it's Description Protocol. Session Description Protocol. Mm -hmm. That's actually how SIP relates to telephony because SIP was not uh, developed for telephony. Right, exactly. Not in English. Um, mm, that's interesting. Well, no, because now we're, now we're actually... Oh, So you ignored. Mm -hmm. I ignored it. Go to session 
Which I did. Did I? How did I get here? Oops. Drag. Let me make sure my SDP is. Oh, that's where it was. New session measures. Right. Okay. And I did. So I was a head person. Yeah, only one group for all of your session management. The only reason why you have end up with multiple groups is when you have session marks in different versions. Like that's some of them might yeah, be six or three, some others seven. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so this is six out of two and six out of feature pack four, I guess. You're in charge. Well, that's that's a, address. That should be that one. Address. Yeah, because that's that would be where the router is. Yep. You're in charge. Gateway looks that's okay. Up. That would be for the router. This is the default gateway. Uh, <laughs> and SIP firewall is fine. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's all good. Keep the default in the new condom. Monitoring CEO, personal profile manager, emergency inspection, state commit, suicide. What if I want to leave the CEO? Just keep the default. Kaboom. That's a little off. You probably have to define it. I would, and so it probably would give me an error if yeah. I try to do that. And then just hit commit. Yep. And then you want to navigate to back to home. Let's see, saves. Was the email still checked? No. This was no. This was an older tab. Oh, 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 oh geez. <laughs> All right. Better I, I make the mistakes here. One ninety two. One sixty eight. Ten. Seven. <laughs> Limited connection, maintenance mode. Our session manager. Are we supposed to see it? Or no, it's not very detailed. It doesn't yeah, explain huge. Oh, thing. okay, so yeah. let me go back to so elements, session secure. manager. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Session yeah, manager administration. Yeah, yeah, I see it here. Let's click on that. Yeah. Yeah. Select your oh, manager. let me do the ignore because that was didn't seem to. Okay. Now go to service, state, and accept new service. Well, hold on. Let me click on edit. Let's really make sure that this was good. I didn't just yeah, get yeah, lose a lot of stuff. Nope, that's fine. That's fine. Monitoring is fine. <coughs> so I'm not making any changes. I'm just going to cancel out of there. Save. That thing just unchecks itself all the time. I'm going to ask every time. I'm going to ask every time. Select your session manager. This will be 2019. Okay. See the service state? Accept new service. Confirm. Yep, confirm. Good. And your session manager should now be accepting SIP services. It says normal. Through the course you defined. Right. Is there something uh, uh, that allies the community? Yes, because we didn't find a live security module we found. So, ah. that's not good. Yeah. so yeah, you should see that. So let's click on this. Okay. Now. Let's go into uh, it. You are, okay. Security module. Let me point something out here, guys. 
that's in release 7 remember that labs are in release 7 and there is this new thing you're in lab what Jesse 3 right yes lab 3 so when you create the session my instance I don't know if you noticed but there is this field called maintenance mode mm. and it was checked by default it's a field that you probably didn't see in the screenshot oh. because it's a new field maintenance mode so it's checked by default which allows you to deploy or let's say uh, configure these session manager instances even without having the physical server of session manager. So you could configure it with all of those IP parameters and it's gonna it's not gonna come up, session manager is not gonna come up because it could be used exactly for the purpose of not having session manager yet ready, but you could still configure all of those instances in, in system manager. It's gonna look exactly as it looks right now in lab three. You see, it's set to maintenance mode. It's a new state that now you have in session manager. You can see, if you go to service state, there are three states. Before in release six to three, there were only two states. Denying new service, accept new service, but now we have this maintenance mode. Wow. It's useful for pre-deployment, you know, in case, again, in case you wanna in system manager configure all of your session managers, but maybe you don't have them yet. Right. So it's a good way for you to configure them without generating alarms. Because back in the day, if you configure the session so manager you. and the session manager was not physically there, it will generate alarms. Yeah. Now, if you configure them and leave them in maintenance mode, it doesn't generate so it's a alarms. Way of suppressing things. alarms. Yeah, it's also useful to do some maintenance in the servers. Because before, if you wanted to do maintenance on a server, you would go to the nine new service and maybe do some maintenance in the server, but that would generate an alarm. Right. So now, if you need to do some maintenance in the server, just go to maintenance mode, which denies services in the session manner, but it doesn't generate an alarm. So yes, all you need to do from here, and I know it's not in the lab because the lab, the, the lab exercise is for six to three, all you need to do is select your session manager and change that from maintenance mode to accept new service. And then confirm and you should see your session manager coming up. Yeah. It's interesting that ours, uh, the security, mo or was it security module uh -huh. was read at the beginning. It took a little while. And then it now takes it's some time for it to come up. Gotcha. Okay. Let's see. So let me take a look before we go to launch to each to every session manager. I want to make sure that everything is up. Lab one looks good. Mm -hmm. uh, the data replication. I think at normal license mode. Yeah, as you manage that. That's gonna change. It'll catch on. Yeah, yeah. That's gonna change to a problem with the license. Okay. Thirty days from now. We won't be there. <laughs> yeah, here in lab two, we do see right away the error in the license. Something that I need to check is I do see the replication fine here, but I find it in lab one. I find the data replication with exclamation mark. Uh -oh. it, ah. Yeah, it took a minute for, yeah. mind, for mine to sync too. By the way, if it never changes and it's still, it's still like that, that would mean that the host file in system manner is not well configured. The host file in system manner, let me point that out. So if I go to system manager, in lab one it's 10.7. Mm -hmm. And this is for when you install system manager session manager. Uh, it's not, admin, it's actually admin. And C1, COE, one to three pound. What I'm saying is that the host file under ETC, should have the FQDN of your session manager. Ah. Okay, you could get along with a DNS server that resolves that FQDN to an IP address, but in the labs we don't have a, a, F, a DNS server, so. During, this is something that happens a lot and people forget to put this entry in the host file and then the replication doesn't happen successfully. Mm -hmm. So you wanna make sure that in the host file of system manager, you have an entry for your session manager. 
enter with the IP address of your session manager. Notice that it's the management IP address of your session manager, and then the FQDN of your session manager. Well, here we see it's not only the FQDN, but the FQDN and the host name. That's a common mistake for you guys that give support. If you ever see a problem here with replication, first thing you want to check is that host file in system manager because maybe it doesn't have the entry of session. So when it's implemented, you're not going to get leave it not replicate. I mean, once it works the first time, that's it, right? That host file is a done deal. Yeah, that host yeah. file. Yeah. yeah. Set it and forget it. So isn't there an issue with seven? Don't you have to be root to act, to edit the host file? <laughs> it's seven dot one. Seven one. Yeah, and I found actually a script in seven dot one that allows you to modify the host file without having to be root. They put they they have a script now. I can send you that email because I found it and I sent it to someone and I found it. It's a way for you to modify the the host file without being root. Because now they, they no longer that. give you root in system manager. Yeah, oh. and there's that weird now uh, you kill uh, ASG. Yeah, in yeah, in seven, which is the one we have, notice that still the default root account and the default password is root zero one. So I'm root right now, but in seven dot one you no longer have the root account. So they added a script. Yeah, that got me one time. Yeah. Because, yeah, you need to modify this file for you to be able to install successfully. Okay, let's go have lunch. Actually, let me check. All of the labs are sh showing green, everything. Let's see now. Lab 3 and lab 4. And we have 30 days, right, in the license. So mm -hmm. we'll do. <laughs> All right, you have to finish class so within 30 days. <laughs> <laughs> have us. See you about an hour.